honorable chair uh, fellow panelists uh, ladies and gentlemen good afternoon to you i think so the biorhythm of 1 o'clock is going to be ticking high and uh, thank to my fellow panelists of giving me the shorter time so i will skip all the presentation aspect but get into the brass tech straight away so the today's topic essentially is uh, a topic which has been snatched away from uh, mr gupta who was very keen to express his views on the industry's preparedness especially from the ammunition point of view but uh, in my case i will be sort of restricting with so called padmavat syndrome because whenever you make any public uh, announcements and lectures you better make sure there are disclaimers the first and foremost when i do that i'm going to not include bharat dynamics as a part of the indian industry because they are a league apart so compliments for the ipo which is coming in and we wish all the success to bdl uh second aspect when we talk about uh when we say missile i will i'm going to focus only on missile article because missile system is another mammoth area which will require a very very detailed uh, sort of elaboration so having said that particular thing uh, is the indian industry ready and is the ready for the collaboration to make sure that we started manufacturing missile do we give a uh, a chance to say that yes there are enough and more space and people and skill sets and facilities understandings available in the indian industries to take on this task i think so the emphatic message from all the industries behalf i would say i would like to sort of mention is yes today indian industry is poised uh, with the awareness of the involvement of the various investments required with the skill sets with the procedure requirements and of course the risk involved as what you right to say you have a 50 target and if you miss one the lot gets rejected we are all aware of the risk now having said that it's so easy because uh, one of my consort are rightly called upon that as a prospective planning i will call upon the industry to come and work because there is a tpcr document well it doesn't help us at all i'm sorry to say that because the question is Uh, what happens on the ground to what happens to this documents release there's a wide gap which essentially needs to be sort of filled by so many policies and so many uh, you know uh, mechanisms at the government level at the uh, ministerial level to sort of make it happen so again i will not go into those details but the primary fact remains is today i think so from the manufacturing capability we have a capability as an indian industry to take on manufacturing now that's could be a loud statement it would be a too ambitious a thing to be worked out so what i want to do just suggest that yes we are not giving a run for money for bdl but definitely we want to complement bdl to make sure the capacity constraints which essentially are today can be met the expectation of the customer which is required in today's environment or the number of missile deficit that exists in the inventory are met by the private industry so we would like to sort of start small start in a nimble way and few of the areas that would be very very important to sort of talk about will be the following the biggest pain point today that we have is that we have our drio working very hard to come out with a technological product which meets the aspirations of our customer for their future futuristic operational requirement to the best in class kind of thing however there will be always a gap now that's where the collaboration of the indian industry can fill in the gap in a very earnest way if you look at the missile and if you look at the prime requirement the seeker which is the core technology which is essentially the major gap which we still are struggling at the drdo level to sort of accomplish i am sure a collaboration by the indian industry with the foreign oems can bring in this technology through drdo i'm not saying as an opponent or as a sort of against the drdo but through drdo to come out with a product much faster and that's where i think so the whole support systems can be arise and we can sort of make it happen so this is the first aspect i am not going to get into details of which seeker how many which technology which oem but this is the one of the major enablers of collaboration that can be sort of leveraged by the services by the mod to sort of make it happen and today 
we are poised in the, as an Indian industry, as a partnership with the OEM, to come out with the solutions and offer it. So it's not a thing of uh, a wish list, it's actually a reality which can be made to happen. Second aspect is the capacity building requirement. Please understand that uh, today uh, we have a fairly stable processes available with DRDO and BDL who have manufactures lakhs and lakhs of missile from varying from ATGM, SAMs and other things. There is a need that uh, Indian industry can become an integrator. Okay, does it mean to be coal integrator or a hot integrator? Okay, let's start with the coal integration. So I think so these are the steps that can be taken up upfront. Today, yes, it's very heartening to know that uh, BDL has taken step to just meet the numbers which are required to be delivered to start outsourcing a section to a private industry to give it as a qualified thing so they can integrate. But I say, why restrict to that? There is enough and more capabilities and skill set and know-how available where all of this particular coal integrated missiles or various things can be supplied to BDL and worked out. So this is another thing which I would just like to say regarding the collaboration, that there is a need uh, for BDL to come out from the aspect of just saying we will have to be L1 and we'll have to go to tendering procedure. Yes, these are part of procedures. Please follow it, not an issue. But go beyond the scope of just a subsystem level uh, qualified system being delivered to the uh, BDL as such. Uh, I would also like to request or send a message to DRDO because I had a pleasure of being in uniform, I worked with BDL in fact, and now in the private sector. I have seen that I integrate or my team integrates some strategic missiles under the supervision of DRDO. In fact, I find why would ever a DRDO be involved in manufacturing of any strategic missile too? They should be the one who designed stabilize and pass it on to manufacturing agencies or production agencies. So that is another gap which I would say from the collaboration point of view, that let those strategic missiles which essentially are being sort of manufactured in numbers where the process has been stabilized and the confidence exists about making sure of hands-holding the Indian industry to sort of deliver those things on behalf of DRDO and the MOD. So these are the four few issues I personally think that we can make it happen. I'm sure uh, the OEMs who are sitting here would also supplement this particular aspect. But yes, there are challenges involved. There are government regulations which are required to be put in place. There are IP related issues which needs to be addressed. And of course, the most important, the commercial aspect needs to be understood while we really undertake those things. So it will be the volumes, it will be the uh, policy cloud which needs to be sort of removed and a confidence given to the Indian industry that yes, you can make it happen. Last but not least, I would say is that whenever we go for the tendering procedure, we always have a mechanism where we say, okay, L1 will get so and so, so and so missile or we have a so-called production agency being nominated by a Ministry of Defense. Please, I think so, understanding the requirement, there is a need for MOD not to take the risk and ensure uh, competent authorities like BDL to be sort of made production agency. But why don't you give some portion of that same TOT being passed on to the private industry, which can make it happen. So with this uh, small uh, details, I think so I rest my point. I'll be too happy to take on questions uh, more in details about what is the procedure. Uh, why I talk about this, because we at Kalyani have walked the talk in, the in, in terms of uh, do we have a manufacturing facility which can address a coal integration of uh, ATGM? Yes, we are ready. Do we have a contract? No, but we still is okay. It's not that we are having any, any, any issues with that, because it is a strategic vision of a chairman of a company who wants to make it happen. The most important thing aspect, do we have an R&D? Yes, I'm sure come Def Expo, you'll hear many of the private industry coming out with the solutions and the products, which even the specification are not given out, but they've taken a step ahead to go about to sort of design the particular systems, subsystems, and ready to offer to the customers. So I think so with this, I will just uh, close my session. And thank you very much for your patience hearing. And I think so, Chairman, sir, I have saved the time, sir. Thank you.
Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rudra Jadeja. I think that was a very uh, nicely packaged, uh, pragmatic, and uh, interesting perspective on the preparedness of the Indian industry and the way forward in, in a collaborative approach for missile manufacture. Uh, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are now open for the interactive session or the open house session. Uh, another 10 or 12 minutes, and you could take on your questions. Please give out your name and the firm that you represent and address your questions, please. Hello, sir. Yes, please. Um, I'm Dr. G.K. Misra from CFIS DRD of Ministry of Defense, working in the area of environment, fire, and explosive safety, making missiles, producing missiles, manufacturing missiles, and the know-how for missiles, and missiles integration, inspections, and uses are one area where you can have the industry either full integration or partly component manufacturing as per the guidelines, plan, standards, and the requirements. But the one thing which is more important uh, also, that is the safety related to missiles and its component productions, whether it is a warhead or it is a propellant or the both, the calculation of TNT equivalence and the sensitivity related to handling of those explosive propellants and processings are very, very hazardous area. So expert safety members with respect to explosive safety as well as the fire safety, these two, and nowadays growing concern about the environment safety. The, these three safeties should not be, I think, ignored. Proper expertise as per standards should be there for all manufacturers because the loss of property you can bear to some extent, but the loss of expert skilled personnel that will be a big loss to the industries, to the human race, and the nation. With these remarks, I will request all of the manufacturers, whether the big or the small, must pay attention over the safeties. Thank you. Dr. Mishraji, I think um, you may be aware of BDL. BDL actually started in Yes, yes. Uh, we, we, exactly. Then uh, you, you must be well aware of our procedures. We have uh, regulations in place, and safety is our at most uh, topmost priority when we enter into the explosive buildings or while we are handling we, all the safety regulations and the procedures are followed as. Sir, BDL, it's okay, sir. I am talking about those who are coming up. Yeah, that's what I know. In my presentation, I had been uh, emphasizing on the safety and handling procedures. Thank you. I'll also request uh, Mr. Jadeja to give his views. I, I think so. Um, I, I would have a really different perspective to this thought process because uh, if you look at it, Mr. Sir, with due regards to your experience and your involvement in this and, and a right caution in this forum, uh, well accepted, sir. But I'm sure uh, we have many private industries who are already into explosives and with very good track records going around, sir. So the awareness, the re risk involved in the uh, involvement uh, for such a such a sort of high risk uh, areas, which requires a lot of sensitivity, safety measures are well understood. And in fact, I would say, sir, uh, it is the people with this kind of repository of knowledge who essentially retire and come out do advise the private industry to sort of make sure that we are better rather than you know going to the stereo mechanism of what is to be done, but how we can do it better. Because I'm sure uh, if you just take a SpaceX guy, the Elon Musk thing 
whoever thought that he will be retrieving all these motors and we can be reusing it. So I think so there is a, a right caution taken here, but I think so we need to get a new perspective coming in to make sure that you know, uh, we just don't make the barriers of entry so high and so scare that uh, people do not take the challenges of getting into this domain, sir. Thank you. So I do agree with you, sir. But the thing is that as far as the I visited BDL, I visited DRDL, I visited all those involved in the missiles technology. If you go through the personal static charge, the MSDS, uh, uh, personal uh, char discharger, that is a static discharger, it is red and green that is used as an indicator in all of the industries. I was the first person who introduced digital, figured out how much a static charge a personal is carrying out while entering to handle the fuses or handle the bare explosives, initiators, etc. Why it is so? You can make a logbook for entire history of the personal charge a worker is carrying out throughout his working career. So a digital ESDS should be required. This was my advanced suggestion while I visited BDL or the DRDL. That is not in use. So don't say that what expert people handling the classical equipments will handle those sensitive energetic propellants as well as the high explosive. Explosive area also changed. When you talk about the CL20 or you talk about the ONC, Octa Nitro Kuwain, if you talk about any advance having uh, 11,500 BOD, do you know 12,000 BOD, not talking about TNT, RDX and HMX, which are everybody knows. I was the auditor for a TVRL, also the HMX plant, Bharat Explosives handled. So, sir, not like that. Don't underestimate the safety. It is loss of industries, it's expert skill and the uh, equipments. Pay attention at least. Thank you. Thank you very much for your valuable uh, thoughts and inputs. I think uh, uh, we'll discuss it in the last session further. Uh, we'll take out any other questions that are there, please. Yeah. Uh, may I ask? Yes, sir. Uh, yes. If, uh, I'm uh, Dr. Sukrutu Barve from Center for Modeling and Simulation, University of Pune. Uh, I have a question for uh, the EGM, uh, Biodynamics Limited, uh, Mr. Rao. Uh, you 